Right, welcome back. Um, in this video, I just want to try and solidify the concept of uh, stoichiometry. So, I've got a very simplified example, and then how to relate if you're given the number of moles or the mass or whatever, some information about one of the reactants or products in a chemical reaction. How do you use the chemical reaction stoichiometry to relate? Um, all the species in that reaction. So here we're told that 1A reacts with 3B to give 12C. 12C. <clears throat> so immediately what you should notice from that is a small amount of A reacting with a bit more of B will give you a lot of C. Okay, so whenever you're doing a calculation then you a and B should be less than C, um, and A should be less than B, um, and A, of course, be um, the least in anything that you calculate, except maybe for the mass, because the mass uh, differs from whatever. But in terms of moles, it should be less. And then we're told we want to produce 12 mole of C. How many moles of, uh, uh, of A and B do we need to react stoichiometrically to achieve this goal. So it should just be an ob. So in other words, we need to use the mole ratio of C to determine the number of moles of A and B um, to re uh, what that needs to react to give us that. All right. So what would you have normally done? Uh, so let's start by writing down 1A plus 3B gives 12 C. Now this is a ratio that tells us one mole of A, one mole of A needs to react with three mole of B, gives us 12 mole of C. So I'm going to write it out very formally in terms of how do you look at the units, the so-called units of this? So what you normally probably would have done is you would have used the cheat code and said, well, um, to get the number of moles of A, you're going to say, well, 1 to 12 is the relationship between A and C. What we have is we want 24 mole of C. So then how many mole of A? That is something called X, which we don't really know what it is. And then you combine this by cross multiplying. So you would say 12 go to that side, 1 goes to that side. So then actually you would have, let me just write what you probably would have written. You would have, let me put it in red because that's not formally correct. You would have said 12X is equal to 24. Therefore, X is equal to 2. Um, and then most of the time, and it's 2 because, of course, you would divide by 12 on each side. Then most of the time, you would just leave it as such. But what is X? X is actually mole A. That is the so-called, like, the unit of this X. So what is the more formal way to write it? Well, normally, we would do some other kind of uh, writing. So we would say the number of mole of A is equal to the mole of A divided by the mole of C multiplied by the mole of C. So we want 24 mole of C. We have 12 mole of C for every one mole in the reaction. So we put the number there at the bottom, we put the number at top, at top, and then we would say, well, that means it is twice the number of mole of A, is what you would have gotten here. So in other words, you still get two mole A. But where does that come from? How can you sort of combine those two to maybe just help you to see what's going on? The thing that you need to do is you need to write, this is, so your ratio here, this 1 to 12 is technically what? It's 1 
mole A to 12 mole C. What do we want? We want 24 mole C and we want in A mole A. Okay. And now, oops, that's that's terrible. That's even worse. Why can't I make an... Okay, I'm just going to leave it. In A is then equal to, so if we cross multiply, it's close, too close again, so let's do it. So cross multiply to that side. What do we get? We get 12 mole C times N A mole A. And on the right hand side, you should get 1 mole A times 24 mole C. So 1 mole A times 24 mole C. And we want NA to be alone. So then NA, um, you can drop the mole A because you'll see we put it on the other side just now, is equal to 1 mole of A divided by 12 mole C times 24 mole C. And isn't that exactly that we wrote up there? Yeah. So in other words, you will still get 2 times 1 mole A. And eventually, I mean, then you'll end up with 2 mole A. So what this side actually means, if you write in A mole A, is you're just writing the same form. So in A is equal to 2, and then you add the mole A just at the bottom. So that's the formal way of writing it. And so that's actually what you probably need to write. Um, you can also write it the logical ways. In other words, if 1 mole of A produces 12 mole of C, 2 mole of A should produce 24 mole of C, or however you want to write it. So that, so that gives us how many moles of A we want. So let's do the same for B. This is now 3 mole of B, so 3 mole B gives us 12 mole C. But how much do we want? We want 24 mole C and we want the number of moles of B. So in other words, we end up with 12 mole C times NB is equal to 24 mole C times 3, so 3 mole B times 24 mole C. That means NB is equal to 3 mole B divided by 12 mole C times the 24 mole C. So then it's still going to be 2 times. So you'll get 2 multiplied by 3 mole. In other words, you need 6 mole of B. And that's the formal way of writing it. So now, there shouldn't be any confusion. You haven't lost any units. And you shouldn't have made any mistakes because you have a nice way of relating it, an easy way of relating it, and now you have a nice formal way of writing it. So it keeps the units, is very explicit in how you calculate it. And of course, in any question like this, you must end up there for um, two more of a must react with 
six mole of B of B to produce produce what was it twenty four mole of C. And of course, this can be masses or whatever, but you first have to always go to the mole, relate the mole ratios with the equation, and then you can go to the masses. And then whatever the question asks, if it asks for mass or it asks for, uh, I don't know, concentration or whatever it wants to ask, then you can relate it as such. Okay. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this related better to what your textbook and what happens in your tutorials um, relates it as. Okay, thank you for watching.